chain of thought. It's a PROM structure that has had many research papers written on its ability to improve LLM output and reasoning. Unfortunately, when developing voice AI solutions, we were never able to utilize these improvements. Why? I'll get to that in a moment. First, for those who don't know, chain of thought is when you prompt an LLM to reason step by step what their next steps are and what to do next in order to accomplish their goal. To put it simply, this forces the LLM to think and reason a little bit when answering rather than just blurting out as quick as it possibly can. Now that you understand how it works, you can answer the question, why couldn't we use chain of thought in voice AI development? It's pretty simple. It would start listing out its reasonings and next steps to the person over the phone. However, recently this has all changed. We've had some new AI updates which allow us to force outputs to the same structure 100% of the time. These new updates and improvements allow us to deploy something I like to call silent reasoning. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually utilize silent reasoning and how to use and prompt the LLM to use this technique for your voice AI development. Okay, so the way I'm going to structure this is first, we're just going to demo this custom LLM on VAPI. As you can see, this assistant that we are going to talk to is using a custom LLM URL, which is just linked to this replit right here. And during that conversation, the way that I've structured my code is that things will be printed or logged into the console over here. And then we will kind of just look at the console and I will explain what is going on in the code, you know, live whilst the conversation is happening. Well, sorry, you know, what would have been happening live during the conversation after the conversation. And then we will jump into the code and actually explain everything that's happening. And I will also be linking this code in the description so that you can just fork the replit and, uh, you know, get going straight away with that. So first, what I need to do is actually start this backend server. So we're going to run testing.py. This is my main code. I don't know why I have it under testing when I should have it under main, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So now you can see the port and the dev URL is live. As you can see here, we have the dev URL and that's the same one that is in the custom LLM URL section. So we can just press talk with assistant and I'm going to stay on Replit so that we can look at this shell down here. Hello, this is Claire from Pizza Paradise. How can I help you? Hi there. I wanted to uh, order pizza for delivery, please. Great. May I have your name, please? Yes, my name is Hugo. Thank you, Hugo. What would you like to order? We have margarita, pepperoni fest, onion rings, and Pepsi Max. Um, could I get one margarita, one onion rings, and two Pepsi Max, please? So, just to confirm, you would like one margarita, one onion rings, and two Pepsi Max. Is that correct? Yes, and actually, can we do, sorry, can we do one pepperoni feast as well with that? Got it. So your order is one margarita, one pepperoni feast, one onion rings, and two Pepsi Max. The total comes to 53 pounds and 45 pence. Can I have your delivery address, please? Yep, my delivery address is... Okay, whatever. That's the whole conversation I'm going to do because I just, I'm not going to give it my delivery address and there's no need. But we have really all we need example wise in this conversation already because the assistant user function, which was the pizza price check, which actually is basically nothing. It just returns the same static price every time, but it doesn't matter because you can implement any logic here, like order minus whatever, you know, you can do any logic in this code. So basically if it is returning the correct price, that is all we need to know. So we can scroll up down here. As you can see, this is the last conversation that happened, which was, could you please provide me with your address? As you can see, that is under speech. If we look a little bit higher, we have the full response generated, which has reasoning as well as speech. So if I copy this and take it into a JSON editor and we just auto repair it, and copy it. This is what we have being fully outputted or generated from the AI. As you can see, we have reasoning, which is waiting for the customer to provide the delivery address. Once they have the address, I can confirm it and proceed with the payment link. I need to ensure I have all the details before moving forward. Yes, please provide your delivery address. Then what we do is pass that speech part of it. And then we just send back that, yes, please provide your delivery address to VAPI. And we keep the reasoning because we know chain of thought really helps to increase the LLM output and LLM reasoning of an agent and helps you know, just making the output more solid and decreasing random errors and outputs. And so the entire flow of this is just receiving the request data from VAPI, formatting it because OpenAI needs it a little bit differently now. And then we chuck that to OpenAI, like send the request to OpenAI. And then we get that full response generated back. So we don't stream the response. We get the full response, then pass it and then send back the speech part only to VAPI for it to be set. And as you can see, we also have this function part. So 
when the request was sent to OpenAI, a function call was detected. So the AI was basically like, okay, so in this situation, I should use pizza price check. We use pizza price check, send the like function answer back to OpenAI, as you can see here, sending follow up request to OpenAI. And then the AI generates a response based on the function answer. And then we send that back to VAPI. So here we have reasoning, your total comes out to be however much. So if we go that and transform it, Hugo confirmed his order with an additional pepperoni feast. I need to summarize and confirm the complete order before providing the total cost. Once the order is confirmed, I will ask for the delivery address. Got it. So your order is one margarita, one pepperoni feast, one onion ring, and two Pepsi Max. The total comes to 53 pounds and 45 pence. And then they ask for the delivery address. So that basically explains everything. It's got reasoning that is basically just hidden because it's not being sent back to VAPI. And that's why I call it silent reasoning. And the way that this looks in code is pretty simple. We have our imports. So we have OS, logging, Flask, OpenAI. We create a logger, also create a Flask application and give it an actual name. So custom LLM. Then we also initialize the OpenAI client by providing the OpenAI API key. Then I defined both these functions. Both of them are basically duds but that doesn't really matter because if you had actual logic in these functions, it would still work. It would potentially just take a little bit longer for that follow-up request to be sent to OpenAI because the function would have to be run. Then we have our JSON format. So this is basically a lot of the logic. We created a JSON schema, which basically forces the OpenAI to structure its outputs in this way. And so I've named it silent reasoning. I've kept it true as strict. And then the schema is pretty simple. It has the type object properties reasoning. So that is a multi-list, I guess. That that's why when we get responses, we have, you know, this multiple amount of reasonings. And then we have speech, which is just the string and a one speech sentence, I guess, because this can be as long as it wants to be, as long as it is one sentence. And then we have additional properties, a false and required reasoning and speech. Every time OpenAI outputs, it has to have reasoning and speech. Then what we do is pass that JSON format. Then we have this stream response function, which is a little bit of a gimmick in the sense that usually you would stream the response from OpenAI straight back to VAPI and it would do all the chunking of the words itself. But because we need to generate the entire response so that we can pass the speech from the entire response and we don't just stream the reasoning and whatever, we take the full fully generated response, split it into separate words. So for word in RE find all, basically this just splits words. And then we send each word back to VAPI as a stream basically. And then we yield data basically just means that every time something changes, we send it back to VAPI. Then we have the pass speech function, which is very simple. We just take the generated output from OpenAI, chuck it into this, load it as a JSON, and then just return the speech part of it. We also have format data, which I explained is needed to format the data we get from VAPI because now it is a little bit different. So in tools, you need a strict or not strict. Uh, so we just basically add that as well as adding within the tool that no additional properties are required. So like this JSON format, we basically just add these two things and then and we return the request data and streaming, which is basically just a value of either false or true, whether we want to stream this response or not. VAPI on default streams the response, so it will usually stream. Then we have execute function, which basically just takes the function name and the function arguments, and then, you know, actually runs the function. So if function name equals pizza price check, then return pizza price check function args dot get order, because the only function argument for pizza price check is the order. And then if it is function name, send payment link, then use send payment link. And if there's an error, do function not implemented. Okay. And then this is the main logic. So if we go into VAPI, you can see that VAPI will use this link slash chat slash completions for completions. And that is why we have this custom LLM route, which, you know, we defined up here in the blueprint and then have slash chat slash completions. And this is a method post so that VAPI can post data to our Flask backend. And that's when we handle the chat completion. So if I open this right here, you can see we have a few things that are being logged. So request data, once we receive it, that's when we log the received request data. So we can go down, as you can see, receive the request data. Then we format it using the format data function. And then we print formatted request data, as you can see here. Then we actually log the formatted request data. And that is this whole long thing over here. 
Then what we do next is send the request to OpenAI. So we again log it and then we do chat underscore completion equals client.chat.completions.create. Then we pass and then we what we add to it is the formatted request data as well as making sure that the response format equals JSON form. So that basically just means that the response format that OpenAI is instructed to follow is this JSON format over here. Then we check if there is a function call. So if chat completion dot choices dot message dot tool underscore calls, basically, yeah, just if there is a function call, we do a few things like we get the tool call, we check what function name it is, kind of grab all the different function arguments, and then we log that there is a function call detected. And then we actually execute the function using the execute function. And then we get the result, send it back to OpenAI. That's when we do this sending follow up request. And then we basically send that back to OpenAI and get back the chat completion by just kind of running it again, but this time with the tool result. Now, regardless of if there is a function call or not, this will always happen. So after the chat completion is kind of brought back, we get to the full response, which is this actual text over here back by getting the content. Then what we do is take that full response. Then what I wanted to do is just to make this look a little bit better when printed is to indent it, but it just hasn't been working. Then we get the full response by grabbing it from the content part of the chat completion within the data that we get back from OpenAI after sending the request. Then we print or log the response. Then we pass the speech. So we only grab the speech part from the full response and then we you know log again speech passed and then we log the speech that we are sending back so that would be something like yes please provide your delivery address and then like i said we get the value of the streaming up here in the format data section and if it is streaming then we return the stream response so that's when we use this kind of stream response function and basically chuck in that speech and then the content type for that is obviously a stream text slash event stream because we're sending that back to vapi multiple multiple times and if we're not streaming then we just dump and send the entire chat completion back to Vapi as a JSON and then we are good to go. And then you just have to add these two pieces of code in order to get the Flask server running. So that is really it for the entire code. Okay, so if you're forking this code and you wanna know what I need to change in order for it to work for me or like for your own project, all you have to do is change your functions. So if you have a different tool under Vapi, let's say yours is check time, then you're gonna wanna change this to check time and then also change what arguments are going for check time you probably wouldn't even need anything maybe you would have a time zone and then within there you would implement some sort of logic to you know send some api request to a time api or whatever then we return that then you're gonna have to change the execute function part as obviously your name of the function would be check time rather than pizza price check so you have to change that and you're gonna have to change your open ai api key but other than that there is nothing else you need to change as everything else is changed within uh, VAPI itself because we are receiving that request data. So if we wanted to change it to actually run GPT 4.0 rather than GPT 4.0 mini, we just change it in this VAPI section here. And then the request being sent to OpenAI would be different because if we look at the received request data, you can see the model is the GPT 4.0 mini. But if I were to run it now, it would have GPT 4.0. Temperature is also defined here. Max tokens is also defined here. The system prompt is defined here. Basically everything is defined needed for OpenAI in here itself, apart from the functions or tools. So that is what you're going to have to change.